So what that test was trying to do is emulate uh, most of the terrain on my property, uh, which is not flat at all. And most properties are not flat. I guess you get into residential uh, subdivisions, you'll get flat grass, but here it's a lot of slopes and valleys and curves and that what you see there happens all the time. You turn a corner, one wheel spins, one wheel turns. It's almost like, almost like the uh, tires aren't grippy enough but I've aired them down to like 16 pounds. I don't want to go any lower because I don't want to pop them off. But I've found that I think the reason this machine does it is because there's no suspension in the front. So the frame is rigid. Um, when you turn, there's no give. There's no handling in this at all. It's just a square frame with uh, square uh, front arms that hold onto the front wheel. So this is my second Hustler. The first one I bought was a 48 and I, oh, sorry, 52. And I wanted a bigger, cause we have about eight acres here we cut. I wanted a bigger uh, mower. So I traded it in on a 60. Um, cause initially I was gonna do a lot more lawn maintenance with the company, with the 48 to get into tight spots. But basically it, it didn't turn out that way. I ended up doing more driveways and stuff. So lawn care wasn't something that I did enough of to have just a 48 inch machine so i went with a 60 but um anyway so the machine i had uh four years ago was a ferris and a ferris has independent front suspension and we never had this problem with the ferris so it took me i've had this now we've got uh well we got 38 hours on it it took me a while to realize why is this machine doing this like is it the tight rear tires are crap or what's the deal but it, it the fact that the front suspension is locked and there's no there's no twist in the in the chassis at all so what i've done is i was going to trade this in on a ferris but that's going to cost money um i looked online and hustler sells a independent uh front uh flexi uh you end up buying this piece here that's uh flexible with a suspension in it so i'm i've got i'm going to order a set of them and uh we'll wait for them to show up and see it, how much of a difference it makes. For 440 Canadian, it's worth trying it because trading in and I was I was gonna lose at least $2,000 on it. But uh, we'll give you an update once uh, they arrive and I get them installed. Yeah, basically, it's an aftermarket uh, thing from Hustler. Flex forks, that's what they're called, flex forks. Uh, as you'll see in the videos ahead of this one, we're having a problem with this thing uh, spinning the back tire a lot because the, the chassis is too stiff. Anyways, there's the other one. So it doesn't look like this is too difficult. Just make sure there's nothing else in the box. So it basically looks like you've got an internal torsion spring of some sort in there which would allow for flexing which this thing this thing needs bad badly that's the worst thing about this more i don't like the chassis is way too stiff like i said i've got another video of me going around a corner and spinning the tire uh, so let's see how this goes it's not that difficult if i'm looking at it we just pop these plastics off Back. I'm hoping I'm talking loud enough. I'm not on it. I tell you. Uh, so I'm going to say before we drop those things down, we'll probably take the tires off first because they're up in the air and they're easy, easy to work with. So let's get what I need. Sorry for my back. on the outside on that side, wash on the outside on this side. Pretty much hard to screw that up. And then you've got your 
tire. And I think that's it. Pop that on. Now we will, I don't know if that's a frontward or back, but I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep it the same way I took it off. Bolt, same way I took it off. Washer nut, same way I took it off. Now we take these off. This is a super easy job so far. There we go. Done. Save that. And this one, we're going to go. We're going to find out if I can put these on backwards. Because if you can, I will do that. Because that's just how things work. Alright. Pretty simple. Pop that back on. Wheel on. torque specs I'm gonna say just until it pinches so 75 foot-pounds on the uh, axle bolts it's not telling you about that bolt but that's that's just keeping that from falling out the weight of the more is keeping that up in, the, in, the, in place so I'm gonna say the 75 pounds is on this one here and it came off with this so what's going on with this And they are a lock, uh, lock nut with a nylon in there, so it ain't gonna come out. Spinning pretty freely. All right, next one. Yeah, that's definitely not 75 pounds, so that's just tightening, tightening. Alright, there's the stock one. You can see no, any, no type of torsion spring in that at all. Over here. Get this one up inside there.
Yeah, I don't think uh, 75 pounds is probably too much. There's no spacing between the, the shim there and the, and the bar, so I'm good. Spin speed, like I said, the downward pressure, upward pressure is going to keep that from uh, popping out that they are going to fall out. important because there's bearings in there and that is it now I gotta sharpen the blades there's plenty of videos on that sharpening blades so I'm gonna pause the video we're gonna come back and I'm gonna try this around the same turns that I was trying it before and had the difficulty hopefully you can see me talking so I finished uh, sharpening the blades that's quick and easy too um, and yes lowering it down it is definitely higher than what it was I don't know if you can tell when you guys started I just had it up on the jack but yeah it is about an inch taller but they're saying that it will settle down so I'm gonna go out and bomb around for a bit and see if it settles down and then we're gonna try that turn that I tried before and see if it uh, breaks traction on the back the rigid see if the rigidity has gotten any better or less basically before I take it for a spin I just climbed up on it and saw that it's quite uh, Quite springy. Quite a bit. So this should be exactly what I was looking for. Like an independent front suspension. Alright, anyway, I'll be, uh, stay tuned. So basically that wraps up this video. Uh, you can see the difference in the back-to-back uh, uh, -back comparison with and without the torsion forks. I kind of feel that uh, Hustler is uh, selling themselves short to sell that mower with the factory forks without the torsion arms in them because I believe it makes you think the mower is not performing well and like I said I was I was one day away from training it in because I just with this uh, type of landscape I have that more was not I was not happy with its performance like uh, it just rips up lawn left and right every time you turn a wheel so for 450 you bought the torsion arms the machine was 86 8900 but in the end you're left with the torsion arms or the non torsion arms that were on the mower that they had to pay to build. So basically what's the money difference for them to include them with the unit new? So you don't get customers that are not happy with the performance. Like I said, I wouldn't know any better unless I had a Ferris years ago and it never did what this thing does. You know, of course they're more money now than the, than the Hustler. But um, I really think that Hustler should rethink what they're doing because 
you're eliminating the factory ones, which are now worthless to me. You're including the ones that work well and the machine works the way it should. And what would be the builder's difference in price? 30, 40 bucks? You know what I mean? Because I've got these ones now from the factory that are, they're, I, it's, it's scrap. They're scrap weight, you know. So they should be putting these on the mowers from the factory. And uh, I think they would have a lot more happier customers because I didn't even know about these things existed until I looked up a few YouTube videos on frame modifications that you can make to make it handle. And then I seen the one video pop up about them. So in the end, I'm happy with the mower. I'm not trading it in. It's the way it should be. Uh, but they should be doing this right out of the factory. Anyways, all right, till next time.